Hello friends, I'm Atul Dahale and welcome to my YouTube channel. We all know this thing that the king is the most important piece on the chessboard. Why? Because if we can checkmate our opponent's king, then the game will be over. Very easy, right? But it doesn't happen so easy like that. Well, our today's topic of discussion is related to the king. That is the king side attack. Like how, how to create attacking possibilities against our opponent's king. How to conduct the king side attack successfully we are going to see in this lecture and the topic will be explained through a game the game which i have selected is between tarash as white a very famous player in past and theodore as a black player and it was played in 1894 so without further ado let's get started and understand the important concepts related to the king side attack so the game started with d4 and then black player played d5 c4 e6 knight to the c3 knight f6 well this is queen's gambit declined and then white played knight to the f3 now you can see like both the players are developing their pieces towards the center of the board and they are occupying the center with the pawns also these are very important concepts related to the opening that we should always try to control the center with our pawns and pieces and also we should develop our pieces towards the center of the board remember this thing so black plays bishop to the e7 planning to castle on the king side that is also important we should always take care of our king so white also develops his da square bishop to the f4 square now this bishop is eyeing towards the c7 square and it is also developing because white wanted to play e3 at some point and if he plays e3 before developing the bishop then the bishop on c3 will feel a little bit sad because it will not have any diagonal to go out in that case so he first develops the bishop and now he is going to play e3 move. So black plays c6, trying to control the c b5 square from knight because knight was also planning to jump on the b5 square. And then we can see like knight will come on c7 square and it will attack the a8. So all this planning will be stopped because black has played c6 move. Okay. So white as per the plan play e3 because he also wants to open up this bishop. So every move should open up some of your pieces at least one piece sh piece should be opened up in the opening always remember develop your pieces as soon as possible so black also develops his piece to the knight bd7 then white plays h3 well you will say like why he is playing h3 move well i'll explain it to you because in this position black was planning to play knight to the h5 and attack the bishop on f4 and capture it and White did not want it to exchange that bishop because let's suppose in this position black plays knight to the h5 now white has created one escape square that is the h2 square now bishop can go to the h2 square and then it is safe there and you can see that the knight on h5 will not have any target to do like if the pawn was there on h2 then bishop must go to the h g3 square and black's knight can capture it but now in this position the knight on h5 looks a little bit silly because it is not doing on the corner of the board. It is also said that knight on the rim is dim because it covers very little squares. So did not go for that. But black player was very consistent. He played knight to the e4. This is actually a little bit uh, inaccurate move because in the opening we should always remember that we should not play same piece again and again unless and until it is necessary. Because we should always try to develop new piece on the new move. But black is doing what is like he is developing means he is playing the same piece he already played knight to the f6 now he is playing knight to the e4 means he is playing same piece and it was not even necessary for him to play the knight to the center of the board okay and tarash actually in his commentary said that after the game he said that this knight e4 was actually the losing move of the game because it led to the defeat he seems like that because it created one weakness in opponent's scam that is his pawn structure is damaged after white played knight into e4 and d into e4 and now you can see that the pawn on e4 is a weakness why it is a weakness we'll see now after knight to the d2 if black wants to support the pawn on e4 he can only play knight to the f6 or pawn to the f5 but if he plays like that then his pawn structure will be a little bit damaged and now black's uh, white's bishop can come to the c4 square after some time playing c5 and this bishop will be also weak and there are some possibilities also 
that uh, the F3 or the G4 moves can be played. We'll discuss about it after some time. Well, to restrict this nice development or the plan of capturing the E4 pawn, black played bishop to the B4. Again, it is a little bit inaccuracy like because black is playing the same piece which he has already developed again. Well, in this position, you can see that uh, the pawn on e4 is uh, being attacked. So black should have played f5. That was actually the best move in this position. And uh, he plays his bishop, which is already played. And uh, you can see that in this position, if you pay a little bit uh, more attention, that the bishop on c8 is a little bit restricted. Because after bishop b4, the position will be look clear. Bishop on c8 is a little bit restricted because black has his pawns on the light squares. This pawn will also go to the f5 square eventually at some point of the time and the light square bishop will be very weak and in that case what black should do is like he should try to retain the dark square bishop on the board because it is the only bishop on the board which can move a little bit freely and what white is going to force him is like he will ask him like he asked in the game like he played a3 asking this bishop to decide whether to capture the knight on e d2 or to go back. If he goes back to the e7 square in this position, then he has just wasted two moves. And if he captures on the d2, then the bishop, which was actually an active bishop, it is lost. So that is also not so good in the position because now in this position, black will be left with a bad bishop on c8. Okay, the knight is there, but compared to the position of the white pieces, there will be two bishops, which will be very strong. Because two bishops are always stronger than the bishop and the knight, especially if the bishop is bad. Like this in this position. And that is what exactly happened in this position. Black played castles. Okay. And white played a very nice move. He played queen to the c2. Now black played f5, protecting the pawn on e4. Now in this position, we'll take the stock of the position. White planned something very nicely. First of all, the he has already created a weakness on e4. That is there on the board. What he wants to do is like he sees that there is a potential kingside attack which can happen. All he needs to do in this position is to open up the g file and then he will launch his attack with rook to the g1 and he will again bring the other rook also to the g file and the pawn on g7 will be very weak. For that reason he needs to open up the g file. So how will he open up the g file? We will figure it out. Okay, here in this position the bishop on f4 is there, white decided to control the dark squares because black has already lost his dark square bishop, so he played bishop to the d6, asking this rook to decide whether he wants to go, where he wants to go. So here, bishop rook to the f7 was actually the best move, protecting the pawn on g7 also and being there on the king side because he was completely unaware of what white is going to do, he played rook to the e8, just centralizing his rook. Because he was anticipating in this position like white will play bishop to the e2 and he will castle and uh, there will not be anything great in that position. But white had planned something else. He played long castle, a surprise for black. Because now he did not go for developing this bishop because it will, if he develops this bishop, okay, that is okay. But he doesn't want to do castle on the king side. He wants to castle on the queen side and bring his rook on the g file. Okay. And for that reason, we'll see what he did. Now, black played knight to the f6, attacking the bishop on d6 with the queen. Now, the bishop is being attacked. The most uh, natural move looks like c5, okay, protecting the bishop. But that will give black a very solid square in the center of the board that, with, that is with the knight on d5. And that is not something which white should do in this position. He should not allow his opponent's pieces to get good squares in the center of the board. So he simply plays bishop to the e5, okay? And now black plays bishop to the d7 because bishop was not developed. White plays his uh, plan. He can he is conducting going to conduct the plan, and he plays f3 in this position. Well, f3. Why is he playing f3? His idea is to first capture on f6, and then capture, and then he is going to capture on e4, and he will win the pawn. Just for the clarity, I'll show you if. Let's suppose black plays a6, some kind of move, then bishop into f6, queen into f6, and f into e4, f into e4, queen into e4, black will lose the pawn. So he cannot afford to lose the pawn, right? So to avoid this thing, black played, black was almost forced to capture the pawn on f3. And after g into f3, now you can see that white has successfully 
opened up the G file that is Knight's file is now opened up and now his plan of action will continue. He is now going to put the rook on the G file so that he can attack this king. Now the king's head attack is going to be successful. We will see whether it is really going to succeed because there are some things which we need. So black plays b5 trying to create his own counter chances against wise king. So there is also one important concept is like when your opponent is trying to open up the position in such cases don't help your opponent while opening up the position. Stick to the position don't make captures because if in this position white plays something like c into b5 it is helping black because now the c file will be opened up and black can put his rook on the c file and white king will be in trouble. So don't help your opponent. Okay, so why did not pay anything play anything like that he played rook to the g1 which was about his plan and now black realizes his mistake that rook on uh, e8 is not doing much he plays rook to the f8 with the idea of playing rook f7 and now we need another rook in this position because with only one rook on g1 we cannot really create any attack so white plays rook to the d2 his idea is to play rook to the g2 and now the rooks will be doubled up on the knight's file so black plays rook to the f7 and now he brings the rook to the g2. Now you can see like okay black white has not yet developed the bishop on f1 because it is not needed in this position. Okay. So black continues with his uh, ideas related to the counter attack he plays a5. He wants white to desperately do something on the queen side but white is not going to do anything on the queen side. His complete focus is on the king side. Okay. So he brings his queen to the king side with queen to the f2. As long as the position is closed on the queen side, white's king will be safe on the queen side. Okay. So now what is white's idea? He has brought the queen to the f2. His idea is to play queen to the h4. And now after queen h4, the rook into g7, all these sacrifices are also there in the air. So black realizes that the queen should not come on h4. So he plays knight to the e8 protecting the h4 square so now white's activity on the king side is little bit restricted but white understand that thing and he plays rook to the g5 closing down this diagonal and preparing queen to the h4 all white wants is his pieces on the king side and there is one very interesting concept which is written in some book is that it is like king side attack is like a party and when we party we need our friends so all these rooks queen bishop all these are our friends and we should always call our all friends to the party remember do you go to the party alone no we need our friends we need our pieces when we are attacking don't just attack with only one piece okay so black plays queen to the e7 trying to protect the g7 pawn more so white just in this position brings the queen on h4 Okay, let's suppose if black plays g6, then what? Because it's a very natural thing from black to do that. So in that case, white can simply play h4 with the idea of playing h5 and the g6 pawn will be under attack and white will just win the game because the, when the g6 pawn falls, he cannot really save the game. Means black's king will be checkmated. So he cannot do that. Let's suppose if he plays h6, trying to push this rook away from the g5 square then white has a very nice move he will play rook to the g6 now rook into h6 is the threat because the pawn on g7 is pinned because of this rook okay so black might play king to the h7 trying to protect the pawn on h6 and white can set up a very nice trap that is going to the g3 you can see that g7 pawn is being attacked by the bishop all three pieces are attacking the g7 point and it's suppose black protects the pawn on g7 with queen e7 then white's trap will be successful he can play rook into h6 in this position check if pawn into capture the rook then queen g6 is a check and mate so black's king is in trouble now you can understand that you should not move any of your pawns in front of your opponent in front of your king it will create a weakness only in your camp so black cleverly plays queen e7 just tied hanging on there and white just brings his queen now the attacking possibilities are more as i told you bishop is attacking the g7 square rook is also there and the moreover the pawn on g7 is pinned so the queen h6 is the next threat queen h6 followed by rook h5 and the pawn on h7 will be 
falling. So black plays knight to the f6, stopping this rook h5 thing. But white doesn't stop there. White plays queen to the h6 in this position. And now there are some other threats in the position. As this pawn on g7 is still pinned, white is threatening bishop into f6. I'll show you with what is the threat. Let's suppose black plays b into c4 in this position. Then white plays bishop into f6. And if queen into f6, then white will capture the queen. And there is only the rook which can capture it back. And after that, rook into g7 check. If king moves to the h8 square, then rook into d7, white will be a piece up. So that is his threat. He wants to win the piece. So black understand that thing and black protects the piece on d7 with rook a7. So is it going to stop white now? Well, actually not. In this position, you can see that white is attacking the g7 pawn with three pieces. One, this rook, second rook and this queen. So three pieces are attacking. Black is protecting the g7 pawn with two pieces. This rook this queen and okay king is also there so 3 versus 3 so if you understand this thing then you can see this thing that if white manages to deflect any of these pieces which are defending the g7 pawn then he can capture the pawn on g7 and if he can capture the pawn on g7 the game will be over so how will you deflect any of black's pieces from defending the pawn on g7 yes the bishop on e5 now has done the job on that diagonal he can go to the d6 square where the queen is being attacked and queen must move from that diagonal is that square so if queen into d6 that's what happened in the game white will play rook into g7 now rook into g7 will lead to a queen into g7 checkmate so black cannot do that so in the game he played king to the f8 now there is a discovered check so white played rook into h7 check discovered check now king e7 and now what will you play well yes rook into f7 removing the defenders and after king into f7 white played rook to the g7 now rook has reached to the seventh rank and black played king to the e8 and now how will you win wait in this position queen h8 looks a very natural move but after queen h8 it will be a mistake because queen f8 will come and black's king will be defended so white was very clever he understood that thing and he played queen into f6 now in this position black just resigned because even if he plays queen to the f6 f8 in this position white has a very nice move that is queen to the g6 check and king doesn't have any square he might play king to the d8 and white will play rook to the g8 and the queen will be lost and the game will also be lost so black resign so i under i like i hope that you understood how to conduct the attack in the from this game because in this game we saw that that white planned something we should always plan in the game then according to the plan he opened up the g file that is the knight file then he put his rooks on the g file then he brought his queen also towards that file means that side and then only he used his bishop to deflect the opponent's queen and then he checkmated his opponent's king so always remember join with all your friends for the party this is a party which is happening on the board and we should enjoy the party with all our pieces so I hope you will share this video with your friends also and if you are not subscribed to my channel till now then do subscribe. We will meet with some interesting game, some interesting learning experience in the next video. Till then, goodbye and take care.